Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations on your accession to your position. Um, welcome uh, to our subcommittee, uh, Secretary Austin and uh, General Milley. General Milley, thank you for your service to our country. Both of you uh, have distinguished yourselves in your service. I'm very proud of both you, and I know my constituents are too. Um, I wanted to say my top priority is Ukraine right now. And Mr. Chairman, I'm sure you'll have a closed door session on that uh, before we move into markup. But I just wanted to request that, uh, if possible. Uh, General Milley, uh, as a follow-up to the Liberty Road Initiative, I would greatly appreciate an individual we could work with on your staff somewhere in the uh, uh, <laughs> rather large staffing at the Department of Defense. Uh, we've been unable to do that effectively. Um, uh, then I wanted to follow up on something Congressman Cuellar talked about, the severe uh, illicit narcotics activity that is, dis, that is really destabilizing in his region and frankly having an impact across our country. And I just wanted to put on the record for those who are listening, there's a great book called Dreamland by Sam Canonis and uh, who tracks uh, the economics of what's going on following the passage of NAFTA in 1993 uh, and the wipeout of the Mexican white corn market and the springing up in all the, those places, Yalisco, Tamaulipas, et cetera, of uh, the uh, planting of heroin and moving into other, um, into other drugs. It's quite sobering to read, and I just place that on the record for those who really care about this. Until we solve that, uh, the abject poverty that resulted from that, we're not going to solve the problem, and I don't know if the government of Mexico is capable of solving it. Um, Secretary Austin, I wanted to ask if you might help us set up a meeting with the folks who are handling the ramp up of additional work and defense industrial base activities in your department. I come from Manufacturing America. We helped save the M1, the Abram tank plant. We were told, oh, we'll never have another land war. What do, need, what do we need that for? We had to save the uh, tank capability of this country. We had to save the uh, strategic petroleum reserve of this country because there were people who were willing to wipe it out. Those of us who come from manufacturing America understand what it takes. I would be very grateful so we could learn more about uh, the funding, the staffing, and the current authorities if they need to be expanded. Uh, thank you for listening to that. And finally, um, for, for either gentleman today, um, in terms of hybrid warfare, I'm very interested in more detail on the impact of the internet on communications and how U.S. forces are working to overcome communication problems with host nations and the impact that the Internet is having on creating um, disruptive activities, uh, false information, and so forth. That uh, I'd like to know more detail about that as we move forward in terms of meeting um, threats to our uh, security globally. Uh, well, thank you, and, and thanks for all your support, and certainly, uh, We'll make, I'll make sure my staff reaches out to yours uh, and we give we uh, uh, provide you access to the people who are working on these uh, issues with the industrial base for, uh, for us. We have a manufacturing uh, task force here, sir, on the House side. We're very interested. Sure. Thank you. Um, with respect to uh, you know, the, the Internet and information, how information impacts uh, operations, uh, we've seen over the years that, that uh, in terms of transnational terrorist activity, uh, people that have been uh, uh, have been recruited uh, and uh, and and actually uh, encouraged to take action over the internet and radicalized over the internet. Uh, that kind of thing continues to uh, we continue to see that. But in, on the uh, even in a in a kind of a conventional fight. Uh, there's still a lot of activity that uh, adversaries will put on uh, on, uh, on the internet to uh, create uh, a number of different types of effects, and we see this, uh, as you know, uh, with the uh, with the Ukraine uh, Russia uh, uh, conflict, uh, and we have to be uh, our you know we have to be active in that space, and we also have to enable uh, our partners uh, to be active in that space. So this is really important to us, and it's, it will continue to evolve. And, and uh, so there's significant, significant activity uh, in those spaces, and they do directly affect uh, the fight. And let me see if Mark wants to add anything. Yeah, uh, Congresswoman, uh, first on the Liberty Pro Ro Road thing, I'll, I'll circle back with you and make sure that uh, we're closing loops on, on that whole project. Um, and I was very proud to be there with you and Thank as you. part of that over in Poland. Um, on, this, on, on the uh, communications piece, 
communications is fundamental, obviously, to the conduct of military operations. It is one of the key pieces of our joint warfighting concept, which will be doctrine here uh, this summer. Uh, the JADC2 piece is part of that. So our communi for, from a defensive standpoint, our communication systems have got to become more resilient uh, and, and less susceptible to either jamming or spoofing or any other kind of interference or intercepting and, and, and collecting off of our signal systems. Uh, I think we're pretty good, but we need to get better. Uh, in terms of uh, broader implications, the social media and, and the advent of social media, if you think about it, the iPhone just came out in 2008. Uh, so we are really at the beginning uh, of a proliferation of, of, of all kinds of information, all kinds of platforms out there that can spew all kinds of accurate data and inaccurate data. Uh, and that's something that we all have to come to grips with because there's a lot of stuff out there in the internet and social media that is false. Uh, and we have to be wary of that because of misinformation, disinformation, propaganda. We know factually that uh, adversary states are using bots uh, on a very frequent basis to try to influence our elections, influence elections in Europe, influence elections in other countries, uh, undermine, create divisiveness. Uh, where there's already divisiveness in a society, uh, adversary states may try to pour on uh, with uh, social media and make it worse, even though it's just a single person in a foreign city who's doing this through some means and mechanisms. But they can, uh, they can take a single uh, issue and blow it up and make it much more uh, divisive than it would have been otherwise. So there's a lot of issues with social media and uh, how it's being used for information transmission, uh, disinformation transmission, and I think there's a lot of things that we have to come to grips with. From a military standpoint, though, uh, for us, it's a, really just a communication system that we need to build, make it resilient, so that we can effectively command, control, and coordinate uh, during combat operations. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies, time is expired. Mr.